Welcome back. Have you managed to figure out the command from previous video? Don't worry if you haven't, since it was a tricky one. Let us see what the solution is. So if I navigate to my folder, which we created in the previous video, we wanted to copy our file 3.py, which is our Python program, from folder directory to the desktop directory. And if you tried to solve it but didn't manage to, you probably went with command cp file3.py desktop. And if I press enter, this command probably surprised you since it created another folder, or pardon me, another file, in the folder directory called desktop. This is because it read our command as if we wanted to copy our file into another file in the same directory, and we call that file desktop. And this is just how the command works. In order to successfully copy the file to the desktop directory, we must run the command and specify the full path to the desktop as well as the name of the copy that we want. So it would look something like this. First, we're going to delete this desktop file since we don't need it. And then you specify cp file3.py and we specify the full path to the desktop which is slash home, slash Mr. Hacker, and then slash desktop. After it, we also want to specify slash and type here the name that we want our copy to have. So let's just call it our copy.py. We add the .py since it is a Python program. Press enter and you will see right away on the desktop we got our copy.py. Now that we got that figured out, let us talk about a few network commands that we will use a lot throughout this course. The most important command we already know is ifconfig. We use ifconfig command to get our IP address and what the output of this command is, is all the network interfaces as well as IP addresses corresponding to those interfaces. If I run ifconfig, Oops, we get command not found, so we must run sudo ifconfig, press enter, then we enter our password, and here I have a few interfaces. So let me enlarge the terminal so we can see entire command. Let's just fully enlarge it and run the command once again. And by the way, you can navigate to the previous commands using upper and lower arrow, so I can navigate between all the commands that I ran previously, and here is sudo ifconfig. And this is the output of my ifconfig command. For you, this will probably be different. Here I have eth0 interface, which is my cable connection, and it has an IP address of 192.168.1.12. And I can also see the loopback interface, which is this LO, which all of us should have, and it will be an IP address of 127.0.0.1, which is also a local host IP. For this course, we will usually be interested in this ETH0 IP address. If you have another interface called differently, that is also fine. You could have a different named interface if you, for example, are connecting over Wi-Fi. This IP address that we get, right here, is called local IP address, which means it only works inside of our network to communicate with other devices that are also inside of our network. There is also something called public IP address, which we are going to talk about later in the course. For now, just remember that ifconfig outputs local IP address as well as our network interfaces. Another thing we can get from ifconfig is our MAC address for a specific interface. So for the ETH0 interface, here is my MAC address. And what MAC address is, is a unique identifier for every device, unlike local IP addresses that could be the same in different networks. For example, it is a great possibility that you also have the IP address starting with 
while the MAC address is unique for every device in the world. And in case you're new to all of this and don't have much previous experience with MAC addresses and IP addresses, you might be asking, why do we need both of them? Well, let me explain like this. MAC addresses are unique and usable in communications with your neighbor machines or simply with machines that are on your network, while IP addresses are used to communicate over internet and they can also change. Remember it like this. MAC address tells you who you are. IP address tells you where you are. So that is the ifconfig command. And now that I think of this ifconfig command, there is one more important command that I didn't show you and that you will use a lot, which is sudo. Remember, we used it with ifconfig. Now, sudo is not a part of the ifconfig command, it is just a command that we use once we want to execute something as a root user. And just to remind you, a root user is something like an administrator. It has highest privileges above all other users. With root user, you can execute any commands that you want. For example, once we ran this ifconfig command, it told us command doesn't exist. If I just type once again, ifconfig, it will say command not found. But after using sudo ifconfig, we managed to execute it. That is because ifconfig command must be ran with root privileges in order for it to execute. Throughout this course, we will encounter many programs and many commands that will require sudo in order to run. And sometimes there could be multiple commands at once that we must execute as a root user. There is one cool trick so you don't have to type sudo before every command is to run at the beginning sudo and then su. Press enter. And if you're running sudo for the first time inside of one terminal session, it will ask you for your password and then it will log in into the root terminal. So everything you run from now on, you will run as a root account. Right now, I no longer need to specify sudo ifconfig, I can just specify ifconfig, and it will not tell me command not found, it will execute it since I am a root user. As it says right here, it is no longer Mr. Hacker, it is now root. If you want to exit out of this root terminal, you simply just type exit and it will go back to your Mr. Hacker terminal. Now, this can also be applied to files. Some files might be created only for root account to edit. For example, if we run the command sudo touch file1, we press enter. And if we, for example, type sudo nano file1, type here, hello there, we control O to save and then control X to exit, we won't be able to edit this file as a normal user without the sudo command or without the root account. If I lower this terminal, here is our file one. And the reason why we can't edit it is because this actual file right now has been opened and edited with root privileges. And once we saved it, we saved it as a root, so right now if I try to nano it, it will tell me file is unwritable, which means I cannot write anything. Well, I mean, I can, but if I try to save it, it will tell me right here, permission denied. So let's close this and open terminal once again. However, if we go as a root account, sudo nano file one, and we type our password, now we can type anything we want. Just one second, it seems that we opened the wrong file. This is the file one that we created from the previous video that says today's a really good day. And to go to the file one that root account created, I believe it is one directory back. Or let's just go to the sudo user, type enter, cd Mr. Hacker, cd desktop cat file one. Never mind, since we can't really find it, let us just create another file. Just make sure you go to the root account of the terminal and then type nano test file. And once you type nano test file, here type hello there. Save this. 
exit the root account. And if I lower terminal right now, we will see this test file right here on our desktop, but it also has this lock right here. This means we as a normal user cannot edit this file. We first need to go to desktop directory. So let's go to the Mr. Hacker and then desktop. And we nano test file. It will tell us once again, file is unwritable. Only root account can edit it. And this is something you will encounter a lot. So it is really important next time you see either something like command not found or write protected file or this requires root privileges, just know that it needs to be ran with sudo. Alrighty, so with this, we finished our small crash course for Linux, and I would advise you to practice a little bit with the commands we learned, and also explore Cal Linux operating system a little bit. Go to different directories, see what it all has, but be careful not to delete some important files. Okay, now we are ready, to finally go into the process of penetration testing. Hopefully you are excited since this is where the fun starts. Let us see how to perform the first phase, which is information gathering. See you there.